Hey, vegan cyclist, I'm gonna talk to you about the four days that I got to spend with Phil Guyman here in my hometown. We rode Yosemite together, we rode all over the place, we shot some cool stuff. I wanna talk about that really neat experience and also why he was here for four days. Let's talk about it. The four days with Phil Guyman. Okay, so quick little catch up on why Phil Guyman even came to my house. Phil Guyman is an ex-pro cyclist, world tour level. His climbing ability is insane. Uh, he just retired now and his whole thing is like the worst retirement ever, is that he is going to go after these KOMs uh, of known dopers. And even though he's retired, he's still smashing the pedals. He has decided that that's not really the brand he wants to do, that he wants to do a little bit more about the love of cycling. So he's starting a new segment of best retirement ever. It's kind of like a travel show. He came here to shoot some of that stuff, shoot um, climbing videos of him trying to take down KOMs and also just exploring this local area. The fact that he came here to my place has a lot to do with you, the one watching this, because when he started putting his videos on YouTube, everyone was chiming in saying, hey, get the VC to edit your videos, get the VC to put power on your videos. Everyone kept mentioning me to him. So then he emailed me, which was such a surreal experience. I'm just hanging out in bed and then I get an email from Phil Guyman. It's like, what? It's because of you guys, actually, that we actually built a relationship. I did go do his Fondo, I did a video on it. That was cool, kind of, we got to meet there more officially. So we're chatting um, via text and Instagram, and he decided to come up here early uh, January, which it's pretty cold, and a lot of times there's a lot of snow up here, but the weather was pretty good. He came up on Wednesday, got into his little cabin at the Pines Resort. They hooked him up, and I was gonna take him on a tour of Bass Lake and the surrounding areas. So what's the etiquette on this uh, this flannel I'm wearing right here, man? Is this like uh, super you, not okay with a, riding with a pro cyclist to wear no, a flannel? Okay. Well, the thing is, I'm not a pro. <laughs> okay, there you go. So I get a pass oh, on great. it? Yeah, absolutely. But one of the first stops I wanted to do was this really cool creek. Now the creek is maybe a quarter of the way up a 4,000 foot climb, a beyond category climb. I didn't really want to climb an hour plus with Phil Guyman because I just had the idea that he was going to be doing 400 watts all the time. Uh, so, I, so I sort of wanted to avoid this such long climbs like that. But honestly, we started the climb and he was just super chill going. I mean, we were we were able to chat. He wasn't pushing the pace that hard. It was really neat. Got to the creek kind of was filming this travel thing, right? The idea is to film the surrounding areas um, and where you could go by bike in all over the world. But so this, this episode was here in the Yosemite area. Took Mr. Guyman up to this uh, little creek and man, I don't know if the video can do any justice, but it's like kind of overcast. And so the trees, it looks like an Instagram picture. Just every spot you're just like that's an Instagram inspirational post and then he was asking about how much further up the climb goes and I thought there was gonna be snow not too far up the road so I was like well we can go up to the snow and get that on footage that might be kind of cool but I'm not prepared to go all the way up to 7200 feet of elevation right now I've got leg warmers and uh, a jacket but I don't have gloves I was gonna take you lower was, we're gonna go down in elevation but he wanted to do the climb, go to the snow, so we started going up. And then going down is going to be cold, man. Are you going to be alright with no gloves? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounded confident. Got really foggy. It got really cold. But since you're climbing, you're sort of, you know, you're generating a lot of heat. So you don't really feel that it's cold, just the temperature's dropping. We kept going, we kept going, we kept going. No snow, no snow, no snow, snow. We get all the way to the top. And there's really no snow, I and mean, you can keep going. Just, I feel like we're in the middle of nowhere, then all of a sudden there's just people emerging from the forest. Out of all the climbs you've done, where does that, I mean, is that even a, a mark on your list? I mean, the thing with climbs is it's not about how hard the climb is, it's about who you're trying to beat up it. <laughs> um, and we're just cruising. So this is just a fun one at this point, because uh, you, were, you were going easy on me and we're saving it for tomorrow. But uh, 
it's it's beautiful as far as like altitude gained to a uh, cars ratio it's up there yeah it's way up there so then i said man there's a little cabin a hut thing this is a jones store right over this let's go down there and kind of film over there once we got over there i was a popsicle my hands were frozen and so when phil came here i thought don't be a goofus don't do weird things don't be an idiot an hour and a half into phil being here and i am taking off my socks to put them on my hands <laughs> Ugh. It's cold, and and Tyler forgot his gloves, so sometimes we gotta improvise. And he's uh, we're gonna turn. He brought two pairs of socks, so no gloves, but two pairs of socks, and he's gonna improvise and make gloves out of the socks. I'm just curious how that's gonna work exactly. Like I know it's gonna work. It's gonna work. Cause they have the lobster kind of gloves. Like I got, I have strangely appropriate gloves. I'm not usually this prepared. Um. Oh, now I'm pro. That is gonna work, buddy. <laughs> okay. Regroup, Tyler. It's cool. Just no more, no more of this from here on out. So we descend off this big hill. Dude, my hands. Whoa, I'm freezing cold. It was, that was such a cool ride with Phil. It was a lot of fun going up. The first half was amazing. The second half was very cold. And, you know, you don't want to look like a total doofus when you're riding with the caliber of like Phil Guyman. And I look like a total doofus because I had to wear socks on my hands for the descent. Yeah. I'm gonna jump into a spa, get warm because I'm cold, and then we're gonna go to dinner. <laughs> got a guest and and he's not vegan okay. and I'm, I'm trying to force vegan food down his throat okay. so I needed, to, I needed to okay. be, oh, yeah. I, I needed to be oh yeah I So, day one of the Phil Guyman uh, vacation here, and I got him to eat some vegan tacos. He was leaning towards the salmon, got him, forced those vegan tacos on him, actually. Day two, we were going to film his attempt on the KOM by my house called Tford Saddle. The tour of California came over this climb a couple years back. So I thought that's a perfect way, a perfect climb to go for because Lawrence Tendam had the KOM. So versus him going for one of my KOMs, you know, who am I? I'm nobody. But Lawrence Tendam, that's a legit KOM to go after. Plus, Peter Sagan was on that ride. Okay, so we're gonna do that. I pick up him at the car, we head out towards the climb. It's super cold. So how um, comfortable is 43 degrees for you? Um. It's good for going uphill. Yeah, it'll be fine. I'd rather be if if you're going hard. I think you're faster within reason. If you're if it's cold and if it's hot, 
Like I think hot slows you down. Cold is a little bit invigorating until it's not. <laughs> yeah. But this this thing is 20 minutes. It shouldn't be. Hopefully 20 minutes. It shouldn't be bad. And he starts climbing up to scout it, and that's where I sort of shot some B-roll to kind of splice into his final video. Puppy. Hey, bark at me. Woof. Right, trying to make it look like I'm not just following him, but getting some cool shots, took some cool pictures, but also allowed him to warm up and scout the climb. When you're doing a recon, what's your goal for power to hold, or like what is, what's your program? I mean, this was mostly just a warm up, but in the recon, I'm sort of looking at like, where can I lose time, where can I gain time? Uh, what are the fast stretches? Like on, on this one, there's some flat bits, so I think that's sort of where you save energy, uh, get some speed going into this deeper parts. Most of the recon, it's just it's just thinking about how to pace it later. Are you watching your heart rate at all? Yeah, that's what I do for the warm up. Is I look at I look at heart rate. I try to like hit, tickle every zone. Like don't go hard, but but make sure I get to where I want to go. We got done with scouting the climb, and then he descended back down. I followed him. We regrouped, and then now I'm going to get behind him in the car and follow him all the way up the climb so that we have this one continuous video of him smashing Lawrence Tendam's KOM. It's not, his Strava's not, it's not showing that he went through the segment, which he definitely did. <laughs> but he's not, it's not yeah, showing right camera now. That went through the segment. Well, we got it on five different cameras, so <laughs> it. We got to the top where the KOM actually is, or was during the event, where the banner was. Uh, he got to that point and then kind of looked around, didn't feel right as if that was the finish because his Wahoo Bolt, the live segment, something happened and it, it kicked him off the segment. So he didn't actually know what his time was or where he, the segment started or ended. We knew where it started, we didn't know where it ended. So then I kind of give him like a go ahead. And then he went a little bit further up the road. And at the top of the climb, we stopped, we pulled over. But when sometimes people make segments, they always make them just over the crest. So a lot of people will stop or slow down Anyway, we start to load it to Strava, and it says he's never made the pass on that segment. <laughs> Ugh. And I told him that's where it was. I told him that's, no, dude, you're good, you're done. No, that was it back there. You in extra. Okay, good. Uh, pull up over here. Day one, socks on hands. Day two, Strava end fail on my part not doing very good as a host so far but then now that's that one part out of the way and now we go back to the travel channel so i'm going to take them up to the shadow of the giants which is a massive forest of giant sequoias it's amazing there was a fire not too long ago just a couple months ago that went through that area but what i was told as a local is that they saved all the sequoias, they saved the giant sequoias that it didn't get burnt. Mm. So I'm thinking, I'm gonna take you up one, an amazing climb, road climb, then I'm gonna take you off road, and then I'm gonna take you to one of the most beautiful areas that no one ever gets to see. A lot of people, only like locals, seem to ever go there. Perfect for the channel, right? So we get riding, we're going up the climbs, we're having a good chat, everything's awesome. He's an awesome dude. We really kind of dove heavy into some conversation about family and, and relationships and future and just everything. It was really cool. All right. Uh, I was worried about the dirt. The dirt is primo. Nice. Um, taking him to the shadow of the giants. 
I took my son up here once and he saw the sign and he lost his mind. He was like, there's giants. He like legit thought that road took us to giants. But those aren't giants? Well, not walking giants, but we're gonna go see some giant sequoias. And what's crazy is there was a fire that came through here and there's not many sequoias left. And the fire was maybe within half a mile of just wiping it out. So it got really lucky. But uh, you've seen big ass trees before, right? I've seen some big trees, but okay. you never get enough. Never get enough of the big tree. Mm -hmm. So then we're riding on this dirt road, super sick, super sick, super sick. We get to the burnt down section of the forest, which is devastating, it's horrible. And I, I'm thinking there's no way this is the shadow of the giants, but it's a right around the time, like distance wise, I feel that it's right here, but I'm thinking, no, there's no way this is it because it didn't get burnt. So we keep going. Where have you taken me? <laughs> this was all a charade to get you out in the middle of the woods. <laughs> and I'm thinking we've passed it. A hundred percent we've passed it. It had to have been that spot that was burnt. We passed it. We were right there. It's just, man, those burnt trees kind of threw me for a loop. We turn around, we go back, and the whole place is burnt to a crisp. There is the sign that has the shadow of the giants, the whole kind of map of the trail is destroyed. And the shadow of the giants had an amazing trail that went all the way around. You could totally ride it. You could ride your bike on it. But now it's blown out. So there was a fire that came through this area a couple months ago, but man, I remember seeing that it was almost got the big sequoias, that it didn't actually get them. That's burnt to a crisp. And I promised Phil, I was like, dude, you're going to see some biggies. It's big, but it's burnt out. I'm a horrible guide. I'm a horrible steward of the forest. Can you at least imagine what this place would look like all green and, and awesome? The thing is it's still awesome. It's just it's just burnt. It's uh it's not unlike a burnt cookie. Like it's still you can tell what it was. Oh that's super poetic what I just said. Yeah. <laughs> it's a burnt cookie. This is this whole thing is a burnt cookie that you can tell how delicious it used to be. It still has a taste of delicious, but uh, it's just charred. out and I didn't power through and he's just gonna cycle across pin it okay well if you eat it okay oh too easy oh, yeah. god I'm a wuss so how important is it uh, if you're a dedicated racer training to get in these type of rides that just having fun, not really caring, enjoying it, getting your bike dirty, whatever. Like how important is this for your sustainability of your career, if you will? My coach would call this like a soul ride. Like if you've been training, you've been doing too many workouts. Um, if you get like just a little bit sick of the two by twenties, three by forties, whatever, at some point it's like, all right, go on a soul ride. And that's just, you go out all day. You just do what you like. And, uh, and that could be any kind of ride. But, but for me, it's, it's this. So we get off the dirt and we rail down the descent back into town, which is an amazing descent. The roads flow so perfectly. I was kind of wanting to go for a KOM on the downhill or just, just absolutely uncork it, but he was chilling. I, and maybe that was my thing. I was just thinking he was going to rail all the time and he wasn't. He was, his mode of on to off is so wide 
it, it makes me feel like I need to reevaluate how I ride a lot. Where when you're on, you're on. I mean, he's doing 400 watts for 20 minutes. But when he's off, he's just chilling and he's not burning these little tiny matches during training rides that don't mean anything. Kind of been a bit of an ordeal today, trying to go out to big trees and they're burnt. Then I take him to what I think is Big Dog Coffee that has cookies, but that didn't happen. They were closed, so now we're going into Raymer's. Get some fudge. I mean, we're gonna get fudge. Everything's gonna be okay. This is—it's not a cookie, but it's called consolation. Consolation fudge. It's gonna work out. Don't trust a vegan with your cookie expertise. We gotta make do, and we go to Raymer's, fudge, candy, that sort of thing. No chocolate chip cookies, but Phil gets a bear claw, looks like a cookie, and I get an espresso. We hang out. He's chomping on it. We're kind of just chatting. So here's what I've decided is that uh, I'm gonna have the wife make him the best oh vegan cookies ever. It. I'm gonna make up for it. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna send him home with a, a tub of vegan cookies. My wife is an amazing baker. That's the plan. Going to the store tonight. The wife's gonna whip him up. This isn't bad. I'm okay. Dude. Okay. okay. Uh, but it's still the the point is you have cookies all over you. Yeah. Not not bear claw crispy. No, you're treats. right. This is not a bear claw jersey, is it? It is not. <laughs> as as a guide of Yosemite area, hasn't been the most greatest of rides. But tomorrow, the the card up the sleeve, Yosemite. I had a good time. Okay, well that's that's what matters. Yeah. And then we go back up the hill, over the hill to Bass Lake. He parts ways. He goes back to his cabin. I go back home, hang out with the family, do that thing. And we're going to regroup for Friday, which is Yosemite.